Welcome, Judith, to our two question series. Judith Butler is Baxter Fellow in Curatorial Practice, Teaching and Research at Duncan of Jordanstone School of Art and Design. With a background in art history and arts management and a PhD in contemporary curating from theater, film and television studies at Aberystwyth University, she has been working independently as well as part of artist-led organizations, including Artpool Art Research Center, Budapest, East Street Arts, Leeds, and WAVE Particle Glasgow since 2000. Alongside her professional career, she has held various academic positions since 2005, including program leader in MA Curating and Dartington College of Arts, Creative Fellow in Teaching and Learning at York St. John University, and tutor um, at Macri Curatorial Practice, Contemporary Art at the Glasgow School of Art and MFA Fine Art at Cardiff College of Art and Design. Judith's work is situated at the intersection of the curatorial um, as well as interdisciplinary, uh, performative and collaborative modes of knowledge production and the underrepresented histories and practices of countercultural time-based and network art. Our work together reaches back many years and resulted, among others, in Judith's wonderful contribution to a volume that I co-edited with Francesca Bauer and Katharina Amann and titled The Explicit Material, where she discussed the extended life of performance on examples of Ivor Davis's work. Judith, thanks so much for joining me. And here are the two questions. Can performance be conserved? If so, how? And if not, why? And what does it mean to conserve performance? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for inviting me to answer these questions. And I think um, you don't make people's life easy with that question, definitely not. Um, I think the first question, can performance be conserved? Um, I think it's almost like a philosophical question when it's um, or it, it's too open to answer um, because it depends on what you mean by performance and what you mean by conservation. So the more specific the question is, I think it's more answerable, but if you keep it open, then it will always be subjective and you will get as many answers as many people you ask. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask from my perspective and my perspective is that I am a curator, I'm not a conservator. Um, so I think probably about conservation very differently from somebody who works in a museum as a conservator. Uh, I also work directly with artists um, in with performance, curating performance, most often beyond collections and beyond museums and even beyond the art world institutions. So it often comes from festivals um, or on the street or as an intervention. So it's, it's very kind of expanded and, and different kind of relationship. Um, but to answer the question, I think for me, um, performance is a material practice. So it's not immaterial. And as such, I think in principle, it can be conserved, but it has a material aesthetic that is expanded and that goes maybe way beyond um, the understanding of materiality as objecthood. And I think because of that, it needs a similarly expanded understanding of conservation that allows a connection with this materiality, with, with, with processes such as reinterpretation as material elements. Um, so I think, in principle, yes, but it, but I think it needs a, um, a, a different kind of thinking. Um, however, I, I don't think performance is as different. It's, it's not really different from asking the same questions of any artwork. You know, can painting be conserved? Well, it depends what painting you talk about. Some paintings lend themselves to conservation much easier than others, which might resist. So I think in terms of, there's not much difference. It's, it's 
can any artwork be conserved? That's the question. Um, and but in terms of performance, I really like um, the definition, which I found when I was doing my PhD from Christopher Bedford. And he said um, that performance is a viral ontology. I, I quite like the idea of viral. And he says, I, I need to quote this. He says, viral ontology, where the historical event splinters, mutates, multiplies over time infinitely in the hands of various critical constituencies in a variety of media. So there's a lot of things in that which says on the one hand in terms of materiality, but also who is doing it, um, you know, the author. So, and I like to think about it in that way. So that's an expanded um, understanding of conservation, I think as well. So to think about how, so if we understand that it can be in principle conserved, but then ask about how it can be conserved, I think there's another thing we need to keep in mind is that there is a difference between conservation of performance as an institutional practice and conservation beyond that, that we might think as the ex expanded. I think often we, we, we tend to focus on conservation as an institutional practice. And I think the reason why is because of course, performance is collected since the nineties, very much so. So museums have to think about conservation because they have these weird artworks in collections. So somehow conservation became very much focused as an institutional practice. But I do think conservation just happens anyway. I think, you know, performance itself conservation. So there's a different questions. So before I would end, I think with the question of how, I would maybe talk about what does it mean to conserve performance, which is the second question. So I think in, in institutions, I think conservation is more of a technical and very practical process of working out a formula to maintain a certified and as such authentic version of performance when the artist is not there. So it's, it's really about maintaining the authentic appearance of the work as agreed with the artist, And I think that's very important to think about it, that museums go back to that understanding that it's always there, that the, the authenticity is connected with material authenticity and also singular authorship. It has to go back to the artist's hand, the, the signature, you know, the signature of the artist. So I think that's within institutions, but beyond collections, I think conservation is much more about transmission of knowledge, transmitting knowledge of an artwork. It's not connected to material similarity. Um, I don't think it's even connected to the artist's will or wish. The, the work is in public and therefore it will be conserved through all sorts of interpretations, whether, whether we think about of redoing it, so embodied, or whether we just think about somebody writing about it or somebody talking about it. And, and those are interpretative practices, which I actually think conserve the work, conserve the, the work, the knowledge of the work, but in a different way. So that's, I think for me, a big distinction. So depending on which way we are looking at, the answer will be different in terms of how. But, um, but I think there is an even, other question when we think about conservation or preservation is whether whether performance should be conserved in collections even if it's technically possible and that's more of a sort of I think you could call it ethical questions or you could call it a moral question or you could call it um, an understanding of what's the essence of the practice itself. And I think I always go back to I know I think often Peggy Phelan is kind of reduced in that idea of, you know, there is a documentation or the performance or, you know, um, is it performance is life in the present or not. But I think there, there are other things in in Phelan's argument that are really important to remember. And one of it is that I think she actually says that in a in an, in an interview, maybe in 2003, when she kind of revisits of what she said before. And, um, and I think that's when I understood that 
I think what she meant, what she means, and I agree with that, is that performance, performance is strength, is it's politically, politi it's a political thing, not, but not works that are, have like a political subject, but politically as performance, I think it's a resistance against neoliberal representational economy. It, it, it gives you a different way of thinking about thinking about representation and thinking about what an artwork can be. Um, and I think it's very interesting when she wrote that book, the, the end of the 1980s, and you know, the question neoliberalism, the question of biopolitics and surveillance and this need to reprodu reproduce the other as the same, this taming of everything that, you know, in terms of politics of visibility. And I think what she meant is that performance was a resistance to that. So I would have this question in my mind all the time of whether we should allow performance to get into collections and to be tamed. Is that, you know, should we do that even if we could do that? So I think there's everybody's stance and it's, it's a question to artists, it's a question to everybody who tries to do that. Why would we do that? And what happens when we do that in terms of our understanding of what performance is? So that's just, I think that's just always in my hand, in my head. Um, and the other thing is connected to that is that by conserving performance, in collections, I think there is a process of normalization. It, it's, it, it is, um, because regardless of how expanded way museums trying to think about materiality and teach themselves about it and think about how performance might stretches that institutional thinking, it, it still teams performance as an object-like thing. So even if you think about, you know, delegated performance or variable media or anything, it creates a formulae within which it is tamed, within which, you know, you can move within that, but you can't really move beyond that. And I think from my experience, performance often characterized by spontaneity is the suspension of behavior. It's the, it's the risk factor of that you don't know what will happen. You don't know how we'll people interact with it? How will people behave? It's a bit chaotic. And I just don't think museums can deal with chaos. And I think that's really at the heart of it is it mortifies, I think, museums to think about the idea that allowing something when you actually just don't know what will happen. And you know, I know, um, and I think um, I read a really interesting interview with Tanya Bruguera who actually said, you know, you know, often artists would actually invite that spontaneous intervention or, or interaction from audiences, and they had no problem with audiences doing that, uh, even they might damage a part of the work. Um, but museums will stop that. Museum, museums will not allow people behavior, behaving that would potentially damage or potentially would be too risky for the health and safety environment of, of the museum. So I think there's a problem for museums beyond the technical ability. And that's, I think, an important thing because domesticating the audience and domesticating behavior means, you know, what happens with performance, what happens with the nature, the essence of performance, similarly to politics. And finally, I think, and again, going back to Fela, I just really find this. She said, I, I find it crucial. She says, ephemerality is as fundamental to the experience of, of performance as our awareness of mortality is fundamental to the experience of embodiment. So we, we can't experience embodiment without being aware that we were gonna die. So, Ephemerality is something like that to performance, that to know that it will disappear is for us to actually understand what the work is, what it is. So if we keep it, if we fix it, or if we keep it within the appearance that we agree and we try to kind of hold on to it and not allowing to just go as it wants to go, I think um, maybe there is a problem. Maybe we sterilize a practice. 
and I and funnily, actually, I'm I'm a researcher, so I'm kind of talking against myself because I started to deal with this question because I was frustrated that I didn't get access to works that you know that that, that are gone. So obviously, there's nothing else than I wish more than you know I could be there and and all that, but. When you think about these fundamental things, when you think about the essence of practice, regardless of the variety of, you know, performance art is such a such an umbrella term. I mean, the body work is very different from a kinetic artwork, so it's a variety of things. But ultimately, at the at, at the end of it, there is this ephemerality, which is a political resistance as well as it's a fundamental characteristic that I just think, um, you know, there's something about museums reactivating performance that is always flattens it for me as an as an experience it's never the same when i experience performance firsthand in a festival or you know dealing with the chaos and that's it you know so it is conservable how is a different question and i think it's an even bigger question for museums i think museums would need to be able to accommodate chaos to deal with performance. So it's not as much about the materiality, it's, it's a little bit of uh, indeterminacy and and all, all sorts of things, how li life happens. <laughs> and I think museums are very much about order, <laughs> unfortunately.